shit. What's it say? Is it? Is it got say any, you haven't got any error messages? It's not saying anything. Okay, turn off, start again. Shut the door. Lock us in. Lock us in. Unlock us if you can. <laughs> We're locked in now. <laughs> okay. Two beeps. We got in. We got in. <laughs> <laughs> we sat down. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've never had that ever happen Ooh. before. What was that? I don't no know. No error message. She was going. No error at all. It just wasn't turning over. Well, it was turning over, but it wasn't firing. Something. Do you have a track or something? Like an immobilizer? Or yeah, but it's on the key. <laughs> securely on the key. <laughs> securely on the key. How appropriate for a. Living with video. Yeah, yeah. Guys, <laughs> welcome back to the F12, and I'm sure you've noticed Sam from Seeing Through Glass are in the passenger seat. Uh, today we're doing a slightly unusual take on what is otherwise a living with video. There are plenty of living with videos out there, sure. and I was going to do what I would class as a conventional living with an F12 video, but I've basically done that in previous videos so if seven you want to know, other videos exactly so I've done road trips in this thing I've done 10 things I love about the F12 all of that type of thing and I thought rather than me rattling on about what I think you want to know I posted a question on Instagram last week to get questions from you guys as to what you actually want to know and in typical Instagram style we had over 210 questions so thank you for that brilliant but um, Sam is going to be Quizmaster again, yep. as per our Q&A last time. And he's going to pull them out at random. I have no idea what questions he's going to ask. Um, yeah, I'm, we're going to get an insight into what you guys want to know about this car. The reason it came about as well is because I've recently done 10,000 miles in this F12. And it's not every day that someone gets that much experience in a Ferrari F12. No. Yeah. So I think we're in a good position to give honest feedback on what it's like living with an F12. Over you, to you, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are. I'm not. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> I have no Although, idea. Although, interestingly, but... you've spent some time around it. You've yeah. been in it. Oh, We've been to the Evo Triangle together. I forgot my Ferrari hat. Oh, mate, letting the side down. Ferrari! Ferrari! Fanboy. Such a fanboy. Yeah. Right, yeah, so over to me, so I'm Quizmaster Central. Yes. I'm going to throw your audience's questions at you. All and right. Maybe chuck in some unexpected ones as well. Fire away, man, by all means. Do you want me to tell you who asked it? Yeah, I think it's nice to know. It's nice. It's nice to read yeah. out those complicated names that mean no I sense know. at all. Yeah, you, do, you just want me to just <laughs> struggle with this. The like, first question is going to be. From Danstagram96. Danstagram. Solid. Let's see what you did there, Dan. How much does a tank of fuel cost and how many miles does it get you? So, the tank is a decent size because it's a GT car. So, with high octane, and high octane in England is 97, so it's not sure. that high octane. Uh, from empty, you're looking uh, just under hundred pounds. Okay. Um, and how much you get out of it very much depends on how you drive it. Of so, course, as any, any as range. anything. But say on a long run like we did when we were drove down to Monaco, yeah. you could get 380 miles okay. out of a tank. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't sound great for hundred pounds. No, yeah. <laughs> but this is a V12, and it drinks with two straws. But also, can I say that my Jag, yeah. uh, five liter V8, mm. does. 80 quid and 350 miles. Okay, so, so not that. Not, not, not horrific. It's not horrendous. Or the, um, or the drag is horrendous. Or the drag is is terrible. Um, but again, and I'm liking this to events that the experiences we both shared. When we drove to the Alps and had that amazing driving day, uh, it was sort of averaging nine. And I got about 120 miles out of the tank. So it very much depends amazing. on how you're driving the car. Sure. So okay. spiritedly, terrible. Terrible. Uh, run, acceptable. <laughs> Excellent. <Just. laughs> right, next question. Uh, RKP underscore automotive, what other modifications are you thinking about adding to it? Because you've lived with it with the IP for how long? Uh, since I got it. Since you 12 got months. it. 12 months. 12 months. Would you change anything months. else? Um, up until lately, I would have said no, but having driven the Novitec in Lago, yeah. uh, and this already has an upgraded exhaust on it, so people who might be watching this for the first time, this has an IP in a tech exhaust system on it, and it's fabulous, but I drove an Enlargo, which has a full 
Novitec system on it, and I would be inclined to go the full step, not necessarily Novitec, because I already okay. have the half system on this that's already been paid for. Sure. So I could go the other half, Let's and it brutal. would be similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah so means. potentially go full bore exhaust upgrade, and I also want to drop the ride height by about 20 mil. Interesting. Because okay. it does, I mean, it is for practicality reasons, like it is more of a GT car. Sure. But it, it, sometimes for me, aesthetically, it rides a bit high, and yeah. I drop it about, about a lot of 20 mil. do that, don't they? They They're do do that. I don't know boating. what it is. Yeah. I remember there was something going around on Instagram when people were getting specialis, they were wearing Mind the Gap t-shirts <laughs> uh, because the uh, ride height on those are standard a bit high. So yeah, exhaust maybe the next step, drop it 20 mil. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna slightly change Ashley Hallam's question. Okay. What things do you dislike about the F12? Not many. Give me but three. Okay, the first one, and this is gonna sound mad, is the driving position. Yeah, now hear me out, right? Okay, listen. So, and I think this is totally personal preference. I don't think it is a bad driving position, sure. but the way I liked to drive, I like the wheel a bit closer to my chest. Okay. And But to, to compensate for that, I want the chair to go back so my legs aren't bunched up, okay? Now, the rack on the F12 doesn't come far enough back. I would okay. like, to, like it to come an extra inch forward so that I could grip it like here rather than here. Sure. But I, I'm compensating for that by sliding the whole chair forward and bringing the seat up. Yourself. And, I, and my whole body does feel a bit bunched. Okay. And on a longer journey, I do, I do get the sort of irritating sort of aches that I wouldn't associate with what is a grand tour. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I feel like that's your own psychological issues. That's but my own thing. Yeah, that's my. Own. You go it's with totally, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is totally you my have own the right issue. To have those yeah, issues, yeah. So again, we're all different shapes and sizes, and my driving preference is probably a bit odd. But uh, yeah, so driving okay. position. Sure. I would also like the like to be a little bit lower with the, the arse. But anyway, so yeah, seating okay. position one. Sure. Uh, number two. It's it's quite a big car, um, so when it's fine in the like countryside and whatnot. When I, on the occasion that I bring it into London, it all of us I'm aware of it. Aware of how big you it know, is. yeah, sort of, and it feels like it's turning from the front. Like that sounds really odd, but because the bonnet, like you could land an aircraft on that. It's like twelve foot long. Yeah, yeah the, the bonnet. Um, it, when, when you're sort of turning with it, you're very aware that there's this mass up front that sort of, you know, the nose is moving, it's yeah, not the car almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that, it's not a problem, it's something you get used to. Uh, and number three, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's, well, let's we'll, know. Well, what, come up with number three. You come up with yeah, three. Yeah, the thing that I dislike about this car. Yeah. This car specifically, or yeah. the F12? No, no, your car. Okay, I've got a third one for you. Okay, then. you go, this sure. car specifically is cream Alcantara on the middle of the seats. What idiot would spare <laughs> that? <laughs> what, what a disaster! So it absorbs gene stain. Yeah. Like, it like thrives off it. Yeah. So that. And on yeah, a hot day, you like. On a hot, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So that I would probably not go for next time. Okay, okay so nice. quickly on that then, yeah. freestyle. Freestyle Quizmaster right Go, now. Yeah, absolutely. Off the beaten track. If you were to order another F12 tomorrow, mm. what would you change in terms of spec? Well, these two things tie into each other. Driving position, I'd go sports seats instead of like Daytona touring seats. Okay. And I wouldn't have Alcantara in the middle unless the the whole colour was was black. Ah, uh, interestingly, yeah. in relation to the beginning of this video, yeah. VP, VP Kenneth has asked, how did you experience the reliability of the F12 so far? <laughs> <laughs> Engine electronics wise. Oh shit. What's Honestly, it? until the start of this video, yeah. no issues at all. Flawless. There's been no problems. So weird that. Uh, yeah. How yeah. oh, difficult. Yeah, so, yeah. So cool. far, so good, man. Amazing. Brent Bowell, is it easy to obey the speed limit or do you find yourself speeding a lot? Because a lot of journalists have said that this car is too quick for the road. Which is rubbish you just put less right foot and like that's <laughs> yeah. it you know it's well, there's no such thing as too quick for the road because you just don't use the accelerator yeah. as much but is that um, then a way are you then using such little amount of the car's performance that you're it's a waste 
I'm not saying that I don't use the performance, <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's, 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 it's amazing. It's fine to manage Lord's it. control. And then yeah. Like, <laughs> That's it, yeah. Up to 40. It's fine to manage. No, I know what they mean in that it, like, it has a vast amount of power, so it's easy to sort of creep over the line. As sure. It were. Um, but sometimes there's scenarios where that that is acceptable on on track of course yeah you know yeah, just yeah. like like uh like that and so normally it's off camera it's, it's totally fine yeah when the camera's aren't on <laughs> okay on so yeah. let's see what else we've got Amazing. i can't remember who asked this now so apologies but what's it like as a ferrari owner specifically an f12 owner yeah. with all the button placement because it's very unique ferraris they put everything on the steering wheel and then all over the cabin yeah, um, it's something you get used to. Um, Even though you couldn't find any buttons. Yeah, yeah, but that was something I hope you weren't going to mention because that's <laughs> that's more of a first world problem than yeah. it is. You have too many cars. Yeah. yeah, that's jumping between cars and like spending time in one car. <laughs> you still get those signals <laughs> even in the F12. Yeah, that's just yeah spending time in one car and then coming back and realizing that the buttons are on opposite sides. Okay, that aside, I could take it or leave it. Sure. Um, I. I don't know, it's something you just get used to, really. Yeah, it uh, doesn't, because I think their idea, wasn't it? it was it's, more involved yeah, driving. Yeah, you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel, all that sort of nonsense. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, when you're driving that hard, you're not indicating anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> a couple of uh, Quizmaster specials. Go on. So, two things, yeah. mainly about storage space. Right. Did you get the luggage pack? I didn't. No, would you Would you want it? No, it's no. like a 12 grand option. <laughs> <laughs> but the bags would look so nice back there. They would look nice. Um, Have you ever used the straps? Never. No, no I just throw a bag in the back. To be honest, uh, even on road trips, I don't pack enough to put on the back. No, it all goes say. in the boot. Yeah. So tying in with the boot question earlier, boot's good. Boot's and good, okay, fine. The back is just show off bags. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah okay. I don't think I'd use them. Okay, so this one we know the answer to, but I think people don't always realise. Yeah. Please, 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 please. Tell us the running costs from underscore Snapey, servicing, tyres, fuel, etc. We've obviously come on to fuel. Yeah, fuel we've done. Okay, one of the reasons that I actually did the video in this format was, I'll be honest, I did go out and, and begin filming a living with video on my own, normal format. And then it became really boring really quickly because the running costs of this are pretty much zero. And, and I say that because when you buy a new Ferrari, it comes with a four year warranty and a seven year service pack. I mean, the Fiat 500s don't come with that. It's crazy. So, running costs outside of petrol, and they're dictated very much by how you drive it anyway. Sure. So, I can't comment on that. I tend to go through tyres because I drive it quite spiritedly. And to be fair, you can get really good deals on tyres now yeah, online. Yeah, they're never that crazy. Uh, insert tyre sponsor here. Anyone who would like to sponsor me with some tyres. I've heard <laughs> Michelin are great. <laughs> <laughs> but who you're sponsored by. <laughs> One of the things which everyone always asks about running costs, yeah. so insurance, you, no one can tell you how much a car costs to insure. Exactly, because everyone's circumstances are so different. Yeah, that's the way that insurance is calculated on your job, your age, your location. If you've had a crash, if you've written off a scooter here. Of, <laughs> Things like that. So, yeah. So even though entry point to buying one of these cars is is expensive, running them is by the by, really. Yeah, yeah. actually pretty good compared yeah, to some amazing. other cars. Yeah. Where'd that come from? I don't know, mate. I, don't I just know. I felt it. Just, yeah. yeah just really Do you ever? It happens to me in the shower. <laughs> Where are we going? Here we go. Cool. Where are we going with this? Yeah, well, I knew we were Sometimes here, but... I step in the shower and it's this like time warp and I start singing songs that I heard when I was 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's no reason why like, there's been no stimulus for that. I, it's been weird. Not, I just go in and then it's Hanson. <laughs> oh my god, you know they made a comeback the other day? Like a like a so I heard. 20 year anniversary yeah. or something. Yeah, you know. Hansen. So yeah, I find the the shower is a time machine. I think as well. I like tunes. Oh, I don't know if we're having like a young life crisis. Mm -hmm. I've really got back into WWF wrestling recently. <laughs> <laughs> We're having, you're having a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> this applies nothing to do with the M12, by the way. But... Neil's one. What is the name of the colour? It's uh, it's called Rosso Berlinetta, Berlinetta, and it is actually quite a significant colour because the colour was designed for the F12. 
uh, and it was launched on the F12 at Pebble Beach. You don't um, see yeah. many of them in this colour. They often go for. A... You don't actually. I mean, my dealership, which is Stratstone Ferrari Wimslow, which is otherwise known as Manchester Ferrari, they're not in Manchester at all. They've only had two of these cars in this colour, and one went to the Isle of Man. Oh, so wow, from okay. that dealership, since the car was launched, this is the only one that still remains oh. in England. Obviously, other dealers, I'm sure, sure, have them. But yeah, it's crazy. It's it's an amazing colour. It's a, a triple layer paint, yeah, otherwise known as a pearlescent paint job uh, and as a result in the sunshine it's fantastic and in overcast it looks like an aubergine <laughs> so, yeah. love them aubergine yeah, vibes so. <laughs> how long do you envisage keeping this car for until the next one comes out the replacement the replacement f12 what if an f12 gto came out i will take this I will, <laughs> I will take the f12 gto okay if they were to do a more hard yeah another TDF, level above the two like TDF. As, like an f12 gto speciale yeah, a perter. Then I'd take this. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you, for sure. You get on that Definitely. straight away. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, if there is any other questions that you have about anything... Uh, Text me. Yeah. <laughs> for a stick, I'm, what I'll do is I'll put up a sort of video about this going live. Um, by all means, ask questions below that and I can answer those again. Uh, but otherwise, there it was. Quick fire round. Thank you for all your questions. Sorry if we missed any out. Uh, and me, uh, yes. yeah, we'll... Uh, See you next time. As always, be sure to check out Sam's channel because he's got some great content at the I'm mildly jealous. He had some hot laps with none other than Sebastian Vettel. It's pretty mega. <laughs> See you later, guys. Ciao.